Hi everybody. So in my last video I did this sped up version time lapse of the all the work that happened in the video. And I kind of like the way it all flowed with that at the beginning of the video and everything. So uh, I think this is going to stick around for a little while. So today in this video we have a 2485 that had liquid damage. And it got the sleep angle sensor, the lid angle sensor, the sleep sensor uh, liquid damaged. This is a very common thing to happen. And uh, if you want to know more about what's going on, just uh, stick to after the time lapse and uh, you'll see the whole video. Hi everybody, so today we're working on a 2485 16-inch MacBook Pro, uh, machines over there. Um, it had liquid damage on it, and there was a lot of liquid on the left side of the machine, and pretty much whenever there's liquid on the left side of the machine, your sleep sensor is going to get damaged. So this is, uh, the sleep sensor is no longer just a switch, like on the old MacBooks it was just a magnetic switch. Uh, this is now a lid angle sensor is what they call it. And there's a little magnet glued to the um, end of the hinge, and this goes in front of that magnet, and it senses the angle of the magnetic field to tell the computer if the lid is open or closed. Now, these can be replaced. You can just buy another one and put it in, but they need to be programmed for where the off position, where the zero position is. Uh, the programming is stored inside the chip. You can buy a programmer for it, um, I'm planning on making my own programmer because I want to learn more about how these work and how they store and how they sense and w the, what pins are outputting for open and closed and all that stuff. So um, I, I'm going to be working on making my own programmer to program these. But in the meantime, I fix these. I've been fixing these for uh, a long time now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, see if we can fix this. There's usually two or three different ways that you can fix this. We can try to patch this one up and uh, run wires for the traces that are missing because there's always power going to this. So if it sits in water, the traces just rot away. Or we can take this chip off and put it onto a donor um, sensor. So we can get a brand new sensor, and as long as that chip is still okay, we can put the new chip or the uh, old chip onto the new sensor, and everything works just fine because the chip itself is what holds its uh, zero position. So the first thing we got to do is support this thing really well to solder on it. So I take some tweezers and we're going to hold right next to all of the components. It's, uh, it has a metal backing and a, a, a little um, screw hole to where it screws into the board. So we're going to hold on to that and then we're going to put it into the Omnivice, the device of gravity. Tighten it down on the tweezers and now we have a good solid um, base to work from here. And now this is much taller off the desk than what, I'm, uh, than what I usually work with. So we're going to get something to support your hand from while you're working on it. You want to be able to put your hand on something solid to work on this. We may actually need two. It all depends on where we need to go, what we need to do. And I'll have to raise my seat a little. And let's take a look. Okay, taking a look at this here, you can see it's uh, pretty damaged. This is already out of the ultrasonic cleaner. And we can see that, uh, that, yeah, that's gone. That, yeah, that's gone. That, yeah, that's done. How about this one? That one might be savable. I don't know. There's no plating on the top there. But no pad here. Pretty much no pad there. Let's get some brush action in here. Let's 
Let's get some rubbing alcohol brush action in here. Okay, so the three removed pads, that's all power. This is how power comes down in here, right from here, one, two, three, and then into the chip here and over here. So this looks pretty bad. Um, if I can find the power up over here, if there's still something to solder to here, then we can connect these three and uh, save this without having to use a piece. Oh man, no, there's no, there's nothing left there. So the, the, there's supposed to be a trace that goes underneath here. So I can try lifting this up and try finding that trace. But I don't think that's going to work. Uh, the, this, the, this is a situation that this chip is just going to have to come off of here and go on another donor board. So uh, let's get this chip off of here. A little bit of flux. Take some hot air. And this is where you rest your hand on that uh, support. It's the only way you can keep your hand this steady. Lift it that far off the desk. That looks bad. I hope this chip is savable. So let's get the chip on the desk and see how bad the underside is. If we still have pads under all this corrosion, that looks good. Ooh, it's nice to see that copper there. Keep moving to this one. All right, we got a pad there too. Here we have half a pad. And the one next to it, we have half a pad. Okay, this could work. This could still work. Get all that corrosion off of there with your knife. Be very, very gentle. You don't want to get behind this pad and flick the whole pad out from the casing. Then you're done. Then you need to get the tool, get a new sensor, and program a new sensor. The scrubby scrub. All right, some happy little pads there. I'll put some flux on the bottom here, and we'll tin up those pads, get them looking good. Take my micro pencil, add some solder to it, some fume extraction. And I'll just put some dots of solder on these pads. all the way around, fix up all the pads. Yeah, this chip looks like it will be fine. We just have to get that on a donor board. So we'll go ahead and take this one out. This is, uh, <laughs> that's destroyed. Now we'll take our donor one, put that in the tweezers, and clamp that in the device of gravity. Um, 
and I need to get taller. There we go. Okay, I did not pay attention to orientation before. So, okay, so it's, it's like we can read it. Top left corner is the pin one. Some flux. Okay, that one's off. Here's our old one. Let's get in the right orientation. I cannot see, okay, I can see orientation, cool. I doubt that comes across on screen, but I can actually read that. Oop, whoa. Hey you, don't go that way. Oh, it's sticky with flux, I can't get it off my finger. Technical difficulties, please stand by. All right. When working with stuff this small, gravity usually does not help you. Okay, so there we go. Those are the two pins that were half, so they look okay. They soldered well. Okay, we're ready to put this back in the machine. Put this back in the machine and uh, we'll see if it works. All right, we have the rebuilt sensor installed here. Um, what this was doing, what the issues that it presented with the uh, liquid damage sensor is you have it open, closed, it doesn't matter. You plug it in, it would not turn on. You would get 20 volts, uh, it would charge the battery, <clears throat> you wouldn't get fan spin, it wouldn't try to start up. It would just think that it's closed, so it would act like it's closed. It would never turn on. Uh, you disconnect the sensor, and everything was fine. It, with the sensor plug unplugged, the machine would turn on. You get uh, boot, Apple logo, but it doesn't know that it's closed, so it never turns off. So the new rebuilt sensor is in here. Let's plug it in and see if we get screen. I got 5 volts. I got 20 volts chime and we have an apple logo so now let's see if it sleeps i don't know if this is going to come across sleep now the fans are screaming because i did not plug in the battery trying to cover up the person's name You can see the edge of the screen. Closing, 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 sleep. Open. Not sleep. And the fans are going to freak out because I don't have the battery plugged in. So there you go. So that's how you rebuild a lid angle sensor. So you can just uh, use a, the new ones as donor boards, or you can get the tool and reprogram a new one either way. So I hope this helped you. Um, hope you learned something. Have a good day.